Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're continuing again with our Queen's Game Decline series and the so-called Taras defense. The Taras defense we have explained so far in our intro video then we have analyzed the so-called Prague variation of the Taras defense and we have started recently to follow the so-called classical or normal variation of the Taras defense. Today we're continuing with our classical and normal variation of the Taras defense but with one of my games uh, recently we have covered some great games by played by top grandmasters but i really wanted to show one of my games in which i think i can explain you a great method uh, how you can beat the Taras defense i think you can really use uh, these elements that i will show you now in this video in my opinion it's really one of the best ways to play against the Taras defense as i also mentioned in many of my videos i'm not maybe a great tactician but i really love to go positionally into the game i really love to uh, maybe keep the game a little bit more static than dynamic and then of course uh, to search for good squares maybe for good opportunities to play slowly the game so that's why i think for a positional player i think this will be a perfect perfect method how to beat the taras defense because i think uh, this line is a little bit forcing black to go into this line so black has to i think accept your challenge black has to go into this positional line so that's why i like it because uh, black doesn't have counter plays immediately in an early state of the game black has to go and follow basically your opening prep so let's check out now uh, again what is the queen's game decline what is then the taras defense what is of course the classical normal variation of the taras defense, and what is now our new line uh, that is basically also my suggestion how to beat the taras defense so here d4 of course we have d5 c4 uh, e6 knight to f3 or knight to c3 so we have now again the taras move which is the move c5 we take of course in the center of the board c takes d5 e takes d5 and now we can go g3 or first you can of course play also the move knight to c3 knight to uh, f6 bishop to g2 was uh, also my move after knight to c6 we have casting bishop to e7 and now we have reached the most often and most popular line with the move knight to c3 so uh, basic development of course so what i like always about uh, this setup so from white perspective is of course this long diagonal for the likes with bishop and the good part always uh, when we play the game from white's perspective is that black castles also uh, on the king side so you don't have basically this risks uh, that black builds maybe this queen and bishop better with bishop to f5 queen to d7 and then uh, he's trying maybe to uh, uh, trade off your light square bishop because even if that happens uh, it's not such a bad position anymore because it's not uh, going to happen that your opponent will launch maybe a flank attack on the king side and will attack your king so even if the bishops are off the board still is i think a good position for white because in the long run we have always explained that uh, the main issue for black is uh when black is of course left with nice little pawn which can happen of course after move d takes c5 so as i said this isolated pawn the main strategy about the isolated pawn we have explained it many many times uh, let's repeat it again so strategy for white when the isolated pawn happens is of course blockading the isolated pawn and trading pieces for a favorable endgame so these are the main main strategies that you have to always memorize when you're playing against an isolated pawn so that's why i meant in the beginning that this line that i'm suggesting is the forced line so black has to accept the challenge because black doesn't have a better move so we're taking now immediately we can agree i think that the move d takes c5 is more uh more challenging than playing the normal move bishop to g5 because if your bishop g5 happens then black can react here black can make something happen uh to happen in the center of the board and then you're the one that has to react so that's why the move d takes c5 i think it's first more aggressive so black reacts that was also uh the move that my opponent played and now we play the pin because now your opponent has to explode themselves with the move to d4 and okay in the previous uh, analysis uh, of our um, Taras defense video we have analyzed this move knight to e4 but that's not the move that i'm suggesting you i'm suggesting you that you go more positionally into the game and go now into a bad bishop strategy and go with the favorable knight pair uh in the continuation so here we can play bishop to f6 that is my suggestion it's a very popular line that for instance anatoly karpov used very often i saw this line by uh, played by by, uh, Anatoly Karpov also in some games played by Gary Kasparov so after move bishop to f6 you're again forcing your opponent to do something i hope you realize it's more uh, tempting here uh, to play bishop to f6 than maybe to play knight to e4 this move knight to e4 is again 
uh, giving black the opportunity to make something else but now after move bishop to f6 your opponent doesn't have uh, any better moves if he takes of course with the pawn then it's a messed up pawn structure and of course it's not a good position so that's why again you see first we have this move let's go back so first we have this move d takes c5 black has to react then we play bishop to g5 uh, again pinning the knight and now after potential d4 which our opponent has to play i think because we have talked about uh, these ideas in our previous video so in order to get a better understanding of this particular video please also check my analysis before so after move d4 uh here we can play bishop to f6 your opponent has to take and now comes uh i think one of the best moves that you can play here um in the Taraj defense here from white perspective is now the move knight to d5 again a forcing move forcing your opponent back uh, to retreat and now you have this move knight to d2 so this is the setup that we want to get because we can also play of course uh, knight to e1 uh, is also perfectly fine with a blockade idea on d3 this is nothing wrong with this also a little bit uh, different setup uh, knight to e1 then knight to d3 is perfectly fine but uh, what i don't like about a little bit about this setup is that in one particular moment you may get challenged here with the bishop to e6 move then actually you want to play this other knight on, on uh, d3 you have to have sort of a path to play here something like knight to f4 and then knight to d3 so that's why i think it's more accurate to play here knight to d2 now my opponent challenged me you see with the move bishop to e6 and now i have this move knight to f4 and now this knight will come on d3 again we're playing this very powerful blockade as i said uh now in this video again the main goal is the blockade against this isolated pawn so the blockade is around the square d3 so that's why here with our path knight to f4 and then knight to d3 we can block out this square forever and you see now even the, uh, when we manage to do that if we play the move knight to d3 then this bishop on c5 is simply blocked out by its own pawn structure so i think it's a good method of course black has the bishop pair black has also some active uh, potentials uh, black has some opportunities to go dynamically into the game but i like uh, kind of this position although the engine gives you for instance equal chances for both sides but that's simply uh, my method against the Taraj defense you can use it maybe you'd like some different ideas that's something that i like uh, at, at least uh, what you should always do when you're preparing maybe against an opening or maybe against an opponent you should have really a system of your own because you have to have for instance a system against the Taraj defense then you won't want to maybe have a, a system i don't know against the king's indian then you have to have a prepared line against the king's indian this is my preparation against the Taraj. maybe you like it maybe you don't but in my opinion as i said it's simply one of the best methods so here knight to f4 bishop to f5 uh, controlling the d3 square and now rook to c1 first i uh, attack the bishop on c5 my opponent played bishop to b6 and you see now i have this beautiful square for the knight knight to c4 so the knights are very active we can agree uh, in this setup uh, although the evaluation is about uh, equal but i kind of like my activity of the knight the, the bishop is developed the bishop is not blocked out by its own pawns the bishop is not blocked out by its own knight in the continuation of the game my opponent tried here bishop to c7 and now i tried knight to d3 we have bishop takes d3 and i really like now my next move i took simply with the pawn although uh with when we take out with the queen of course then uh the, your opponent still has this isolated pawn but i i kind of like more this move uh, e takes d3 because i realized that in the next couple of moves i can simply give up here the bishop for the knight bishop takes c takes, uh, c6 was my idea and after b takes c6 uh, the pawn structure gets a little bit messed up for my opponent he will then have two weak pawns he'll have of course also the backward pawn on c6 so uh, if my opponent would have maybe tried to the no, i don't know prevent this idea with queen to d6 then i think with queen to b3 i really have a comfortable game and even if there's something like i don't know maybe rook to uh rook to uh, d8 i can simply occupy this other file with rook to e1 and look at the setup i think i have a decent game uh, with a4 i can further i think paralyze uh, a little bit more the queen side the b7 is a long-term weakness even if you play something like b6 then of course you get pinned with queen to b5 and i think this is uh something really really bad here for black so uh here in the continuation after move bishop to d3 i took with the pawn so e takes d3 my opponent tried rook to e8 didn't even try to defend the knight and i 
simply trading the bishop for a knight because after b takes c6 okay i gave up my powerful bishop but at least i gained something and the, the evaluation here is already plus one for white uh although I have several likes for weaknesses here, but uh, the most important thing here to realize is that my opponent doesn't have a light for bishop. Okay, I have, as I said, several weaknesses, but it's not so easy to attack this position from black's perspective. Maybe you can try something like, I don't know, queen to d7 in order to get your queen to h3, but still I can manage to protect it with king to g to h3 and similar stuff, queen to f3. So still I have good opportunities to protect my light squares, but look at this knight that the knight is on a light square. The knight cannot be kicked away anymore from uh, by any minor piece. It can be further fixed with the move b3. And now the clear target and the clear object of mine is the weak pawn on c6. So here in the continuation after b takes c, six i played first queen to f3 first i realized my uh, problems like worse but it comes also with a beautiful counter attack uh here with the uh attacking simply the pawn on c6 so here in the continuation we have queen to d7 b3 i fixed simply the pawn structure we have rook to c8 now i played rook to e1 rook takes e1 rook takes e1 we have h6 queen to e4 very important to occupy now the only file uh the only open file on the board here we have bishop to b6 you see he has the bishop uh, on the board but it's really not a good bishop it's blocked out by my here very powerful pawn chain and also here when we analyze this position with move bishop to b6 again the bishop is blocked out by its own pawn so i don't want to give up of course my powerful knight for this bad bishop i stayed simply longer with the knight on uh, c4 here i played queen to e7 uh, we have queen to d5 rook to e5 uh here attacking the queen we have queen to d8 now i simply took we have queen takes d8 and if uh, he, he would have taken with the rook then of course i can occupy the seventh rank and i would have really beautiful pieces on the board although the material is equal but my pieces would be simply so much more active than my opponents and i think it's a beautiful beautiful then continuation for me so here in the continuation he took with the bishop bishop to d8 i played the rook to e8 we have king to h7 and now knight to d6 attacking the rook we have rook to b8 and now finally knight to f7 here the evaluation is uh, simply winning for me here in the continuation we have bishop to c7 and i simply uh, played rook to e7 although probably uh, this was better the engine suggests this move uh, i simply as i said took uh, didn't want to take with wanted to st stay active with my pieces on the board i simply counterattacked here played bishop to uh, rook to e7 attacking the bishop on c7 my opponent tried bishop to b6 and now simply uh, knight to d6 searching for new squares on the board maybe regrouping and then find maybe again the e4 square for the knight or maybe here also the c4 square in the continuation c5 we have king to g2 king to g6 we have knight to c4 king to f6 and now rook to e4 g5 i played f4 this was again maybe not the best of moves uh, but i really wanted to use my pawn majority that i have here on the king side my three versus two situation so after g takes f4 we have rook to f4 uh, king to g6 uh, rook to e4 again king to f5 now simply push the pawns further uh, h4 king to g6 h5 uh, we have king to uh, g7 now i tried a new check and now of course i simply took now it was i think time simply to trade off the knight for a bishop because i've reached the end game danger now i can of course attack both of these weaknesses now at least one pawn will be taken for sure so here in the continuation rook to a8 i simply took and what the most important thing about this structure is that i've created now two connected pass pawns which in an end game are simply winning so this is now completely completely a winning end game here for me so here after rook to h6 uh, i took also this pawn he attacked my pawn like this so with rook to d2 i simply escaped with the king now i attacked also this one and here after rook to c5 it's now as i said completely winning all of my opponent also has this pass pawn but i can always uh, go with my king here towards uh the king side the king is protected the king cannot be attacked anymore by the rook here for king to g5 d2 we have h6 king to h8 and after king to g6 in this position my opponent resigned because the uh, checkmate is going to happen for sure even if you try something like rook to e1 rook to f1 you cannot prevent it rook to d8 is happening and it's game over so as i said let's go back uh, uh, you can be the judge of this uh, opening line my opinion really a beautiful way to deal with the uh with this uh, tarash defense after casting we play simply d takes c5 
our opponent has to react i think with the bishop to c5 now we play bishop to g5 now f remove d4 which is basically the best move we play bishop to f6 now queen to f6 and now knight to d5 attacking the queen knight to d2 so in my opinion as i said knight to d2 a little bit more accurate than knight to e1 because uh maybe you can get your knight here on d3 after you want but actually we want to use the d3 square for this knight on d5 because it's go it's going to be attacked for sure in a couple of more moves so that's why you have to have sort of a route to escape and then you can create again this powerful blockade around the square d3 so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game uh, that i played uh, it was i think uh, one cool method that you can use um in order to beat the taras defense you can use of course maybe some different ideas if you have maybe better plans but this is at least my preparation against the Tarash defense maybe you can use it surprise your opponent and win the game very easily very very effectively so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game as i said if you want to study more about the Tarash, uh here's our Tarash defense series so far with some great games uh, from the past played by top grand masters and also by uh, top engines and uh, if you want to study our queen's game decline series from the beginning here's our queen's uh, queen's game decline series so far with some other openings like the harvest attack uh, same Tarash, uh, Chigor in defense and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course